Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll take a look at these GPS modules from the folks over at Rayax. This is one of their RY825 models, and 82530 to be exact, and it's a pretty compact little GPS device with a built-in antenna. It has two rows of through-hole headers. One of them is for UART, and the other appears to be an I2C interface. I'm not sure what the I2C interface is for, but I know that the GPS data is basically streamed over UART. There's also a real-time clock battery built into the backside of the board. The first thing I'll do is solder on some header pins to the UART interface. This will make it easier to connect the module to a breadboard for testing. The easiest way to solder something like this is to fix it in place on both sides using the header pins. That way it doesn't wiggle around while you're soldering. And that's it. While you were watching me solder that, I took a walk out to this park so I could test these modules without showing the GPS coordinates for my house. But first, let's check out the specs real quick and see what kind of power requirements we're dealing with. Okay, for the supply voltage, it requires anywhere between 3.5 and 5.5 volts. So instead of using a standard 3.3 volt output from most microcontrollers, I'll use a 5 volt source for the VDD pin. The RX-TX pins, however, are 3.3 volts. So check your microcontroller because some of them operate at 5 volts. I have several that operate at 3.3, so I'll just use one of those. As long as you're only connecting the TX pin to read GPS updates, it probably won't matter that much, but if you're connecting to the RX pin, you might need a divider. This next line says that the default baud rate for the serial communication is 9600. At this point, I know everything I need to know in order to connect over UART and start streaming the GPS data. So now I can wire everything up to the microcontroller. I've chosen to use this tiny little MDBT42 breakout board, but you can use pretty much any microcontroller. Just remember to check that RX-TX voltage. These boards are great though. They're based on the Nordic NRF52, which is a really low power system on a chip with built-in Bluetooth low energy. And this one's loaded up with the Esprino runtime, so I can just power this thing up and start programming it from my laptop over Bluetooth. To wire everything up, you just need to connect the TX pin from the GPS module to the RX pin on the microcontroller. This is because we're transmitting from the GPS module and receiving on the microcontroller, right? Because this is sending us GPS data. And then obviously the power and ground pins have to be wired appropriately. In this case, I'm using 5 volts from a USB breakout I made. Alright, everything is connected, and now I can connect to Esprino using Bluetooth. On my microcontroller, I'm using pins 14 and 15 as RX and TX, so I'll go ahead and set those up as the serial 1 interface. Now if I set an event handler to catch any data that's received, I can make it print that data to the console. It's a mess right now because we're receiving it in chunks and printing each of those out as their own line. And it's really hard to read that way. So instead, I can add a buffer and wait for an entire line before printing anything. This is what the data is supposed to look like. And this format is the NMEA, or National Marine Electronics Association, format and it's basically the standard for GPS devices like this. It's essentially a line-by-line -line stream of CSV data, or comma-separated values. So you split each line at the commas, and then each value will have a different meaning depending on its position in that line. I won't bore you with the details in this video, because there's probably already a library for whatever microcontroller you're using to parse this data, and Esprino definitely has one named GPS. 
So if I import that into my project, and then connect my serial interface to it, I can start streaming the parsed data. And there's our GPS coordinates, updating about once a second. We've got latitude, longitude, altitude, all kinds of tudes really, and a timestamp. It even tells you how many satellites it's receiving signals from. For most applications, the coordinates and altitude are really all you need. For instance, you could use these LoRa modules to send the GPS coordinates over a long range, and then you'd be able to keep track of where something is. You'd essentially have a remote tracking device. Or you could log all of the updates and later use them to tell how far you walked, or how much elevation you covered in a day. This way, you could basically make your own fitness tracker, or use it to log where you found something cool while you were out hiking. So yeah, that's the Rayax RY825 module. I've left links in the description so you can pick one of these up for yourself. If you have any ideas for projects you'd like to see built using these modules, or if you'd like to know more about parsing the NMEA data that they respond with, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, bye!